and I'm Joe Saunders of Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this video, we're going to continue on with part two of our previous series for celebrating the launch of Team Yankee Warsaw Pack Forces. In this case, we're going to take some of Battlefield in the Box excellent terrain and soup it up. In this episode, we're going to work with the car parks. To prepare for the launch of Warsaw Pack Forces for Team Yankee, I've been hard at work building some new battlefield in a box terrain, which Battlefront was kind enough to send me. This terrain comes pre-painted, and it's great. I however always do what I can to base and redesign the terrain to suit my game table and to build an immersive feeling for anybody that plays on my spreads. Last episode, I worked on the Battlefield in a Box Municipal Building by Gale Force 9. I repainted it and added a little park and some landscaping. In this episode, I'm going to finish the project by taking the Battlefield in a Box car park and complete what could be equally a diorama of a public building bordered by a parkland or an interesting and characterful objective for your 15mm war games. Let's take a look at my process. In part one of the video, we covered how to measure out the shape of the base, and we went ahead and cut it out of foam core. When bases meet up with each other in a project, I like to cut them out all at once. This way I can make sure that everything is consistent and each piece of terrain lines up correctly after they're completed. Lining up the base for the municipal building with the base for the car park, I check to see where the edges of the stone pavers are. Where these stop on the municipal building base, I draw a line to indicate where they should start on the car park base. I then go ahead and draw on a 1cm by 1cm grid onto the car park base. Taking a pen, I then score these as deep lines into the surface of the foam core. With the pavers now scored into the surface, I get out hot glue and I glue down the surface of the car park itself. Deciding where my flower beds and naturalized areas are going to go, I get out a piece of foam core and peel off the paper off the top layer to expose the textured foam underneath. Where it seems practical, I take out a sanding sponge and I taper the edges to round off the gradient between the surface of the car park and the surrounding gardens and lawn. With hot glue, I then glue these into place. For the lawn itself, I decided to add a little extra detail. A few years ago, I took a short and ill-fated journey through local politics. While doing this, I learned two things. First, I don't want to go into politics. And second, pretty well every municipality has an abandoned pit somewhere, usually half full of stinky water. It's just waiting for someone to fall into it. So naturally, I cut a pit into the lawn. While I was at it, I glued down a 3D printed backhoe. I made a pile of dirt out of some cutoffs from foam and scattered some other foam cutoffs around to work as rocks. Things were about to get messy. As I wanted to preserve the surface of the car park itself, I got out a big roll of masking tape and taped over it to mask it off. Now I could apply the grit to the lawn and the flower beds. And I did this the same way I always do it, using the rubbing alcohol method. I took out some Mod Podge, mixed it with black acrylic paint, and spread it down heavily over anywhere where I wanted the grit to accumulate. Then on top of that, I sprinkled a mix of about 80% sand to about 20% kitty litter. When this was done, I soaked the surface using a pipette full of rubbing alcohol. And then over top of that, 
I watered down the Mod Podge mixture just a little bit more and applied it on top. I made sure I did this while all the underlying levels were still wet. You use the rubbing alcohol to break the surface tension so that the glue thoroughly coats all the grit. When this was done, I left it overnight to dry. And all of the grit has dried. I get out my airbrush, load it with some black primer, and prime any of the areas that I missed. I also make sure to go over the backhoe. Now the stone pavers get a quick spray of dark gall gray from my airbrush. After that set a little bit of time to dry, I get out some dark brown acrylic paint and dry brush it over the grit. I work this up through several tones up to a tan color in order to give a quick highlight to the top of the grit. At this time I also get out a light gray and work it into the surface of the pavers with a very heavy dry brush. As is typical with my approach to terrain, the amount of dry brushing has done some damage to the contrast. Dusting the pigments continually over the surface of the model has caused the pigments to settle into some of the areas that should be darker and be more shadowed. But that's okay, it's easy enough to fix. In this case, I decided I would do it quickly by using an oil wash. However, oil paints are pretty hard on acrylics and the thinner can damage the foam in the terrain itself. Therefore, I start by putting two coats of satin varnish over top of everything. When this is done, I get out some smoke colored oil paint and mix it up in a cup with some thinner until it flows freely. When I'm satisfied with how it flows, I take it, load it on a brush, and paint it over all the pavers and anywhere where I think I need to reestablish the contrast. After about 20 minutes, it's had a little bit of time to dry, and I go in with a makeup sponge and remove it from any of the surfaces that are flat and where I don't want to build shadows. Now I can move on to work on the backhoe. I started by masking off around it, with some masking tape in order to protect the work I had done so far. I have a bit of a conundrum here. You see, backhoes are traditionally yellow, and yellow is exceedingly difficult to paint. Also, since my thing is painting tanks, and this whole thing is basically a backdrop for some of Team Yankee's awesome tanks, I didn't want to spend too much time on the backhoe. Because of this, I thought I would work using the Zenithal method. I sprayed it light gray with my airbrush and then dry brushed it with various shades of white and off-white. Once I thought this gave me a suitable look, I then washed the whole thing with yellow ink. I followed up by doing the windows and some of the details as I would with any other model and pretty soon it was complete and I could go back to the rest of the project. Now I could go on to start work on the landscaping, but first I had to remove the masking from around the backhoe and the surface of the parking lot. With the masking removed, I took out some Mod Podge and spread it in patches where I would like to put the grass. I then laid grass down using a static grass applicator. I followed up by planting a few trees and some various flowers and shrubs in the garden. And then I added a couple other pre-painted details, such as the parking meter and this car. Getting out a stiff bristle brush that was completely dry, I pull out my pigments and I work various earth tones into the surface of the parking lot and in around the gardens and the edge of the lawn. To lock my scenic effects in place and to protect all the work I've done so far, I get out some matte varnish and I spray a couple coats over everything. I'm virtually finished now, so I turn my attention to the final effects on the pit. 
I get out some gloss Mod Podge, water it down slightly, and layer it thickly in the bottom and leave it to dry. When it dries, it creates the effect of the dirty, stinky water in the bottom of my pit. And with that, this project is done. Wait, I'm forgetting something. I add this really cool billboard that's available from Battlefront's online store, naturally with an ad for miniature landscape hobbies on it. And with that, now this project is done. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for miniature, terrain building, and diorama content. And we can't do it without your support. We want to build a community to ensure that the wonderful art of building a miniature is accessible to everybody. To participate, please consider joining on Patreon. For $4 a month, our Patreon members benefit from 10% off at Joe Saunders Terrain in the Etsy store, 5% off paints and hobby supplies at Torchlight Games, free access to STL files, a mention in our credits, and early access to our videos. Please check it out and consider joining. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos. And until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.